All right, welcome back everyone. A little bit of a late start. We're uh, almost 10 minutes past when we were scheduled to start, but uh, we're started, so it's okay. Once again, I'm Niz. Thanks for joining me. We're casting the Dota 2 Canada Cup. This is Group B, uh, which is our Ten second of four remaining. groups, and this is our second game in Group B. Each, each uh, group Five is composed remaining. of four teams, and we play six games. Three. Every team plays each other. Top two advance. Best Radiant of ones the entire way. Work. And then once uh, those top two teams have advanced, they make it to the playoffs, and then there's best of threes all the series on from there. But we've got uh, Wheel Wreck while Whistling going up against Black Sheep. And Wheel, we just saw in our first match, take down Boreal. So they're off to a good start in this group. And Wheels actually are runners-up from the Dota Ten 2 Canada Cup remaining. Season 4. So uh, looking to uh, at least get back to those finals Five and hopefully be able to uh, to take that top spot this time around. But they've got a long way to go before they're able to get there. Dyer and uh, well, they're going to look to to do so by knocking Dyer off a black sheep bad. this time around. But uh, we've got a very different lineup than uh, I was expecting to come out from Black Sheep, but it seems like that's kind of what to expect from Black Sheep, I guess, as uh, they are always have a different lineup. Every time you think you know who's going to be playing or what roster they're playing with, it's always something different. Dire team ban. So, recently they've been playing, you know, with Bloody Nine, Yawar, Tralf, Enso, Chrysalid, uh, that kind of roster. We're not really seeing much of that. We're seeing Enso and Chrysalid. We've got Grand Grant in there. I'm not sure who Ha 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 or Hitch are. Five um, seconds remaining. Can't check their Dota buff. Um, I think Hitch is actually just a player by the name of Hitch. Reserve I think time. I've seen that name around. I'm not sure who it is. And uh, maybe I'm just completely oblivious to that. So if you know, maybe drop a, drop a comment in the chat there and let me know. Um, but yeah, don't know who Ha 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 is. Like I said, Dota 2... Profile was private, so unfortunately not able to check and find out who that was for you. But either way, we know uh, if they're on that black, sh black sheep roster and playing with these guys, then they're a pretty damn good player. So uh, we can expect big things from them. But let's uh, let's get into this game, as uh, we've got Bat Rider and Sniper banned out so far by Black Sheep. Uh, Storm Spirit and Axe were banned out by yeah. Wheel. Troll Warlord and Ventral Spirit were the picks for Black Sheep. Radiant Lena and Shadow Band. Shaman for Wheel. Interesting. Um, Juggernaut and Earthshaker were the next set of bands for Black Sheep. And now we've got Clockwork and, well, we're waiting on the next band from Wheel. But uh, definitely unusual with the, the Lena Shadow Shaman opening. I don't think I've ever seen that Ten before. And it'll be interesting to see how Wheel really values the Lena, which Five role they look to remaining. put that Lena in, whether it's in the mid position or choosing to slide her into maybe more Reserve of a support time. role. Or maybe they can even really mix it up even further and put Shadow Shaman in the mid lane, which is... I mean, that's that's some old school stuff, but uh, it, it'll be interesting Radiant to see. I don't think we're going to see it, but who knows? Like I said, definitely a, a very different opening from Wheel. They're going to ban out the TA as well with their final ban. They're going to pick up Tidehunter. Dyer okay, so they're going to put Tidehunter most likely in the offlane there. And the one of the, the issues with Tidehunter, I feel, is if he really struggles in the laning phase, it takes him a while to really get going. Especially if he's not able to, to access those ancient camps and stack them up. And with it being a Radiant side Tidehunter, that ancient camp's a little bit further than it is for Dire side, and it's a little bit harder to stack it up. And uh, Ten it's, seconds remaining. I don't know, we'll have to see how the lanes formula, formulate Five a little bit better to remaining. know if maybe there's going to be supports hanging around mid and uh, maybe being able to do a little bit of that Reserve stacking for them. But as it stands, it could be a little bit of a difficult game for the Tidehunter, especially if it's a safe lane Troll Warlord combined with Eventual Spear. That's a tough, tough lane for a Tidehunter. So we'll look and see how Ix Mike looks to deal with that. Or maybe it's not going to be Ix Mike, but... He's their typical offlaner, so I'm guessing it will be. But Wheel Wreck, obviously have something planned here. Is This is not at all standard. As for Black Sheep, so they've got... I mean, they can go so many different ways here. They've got arguably one of the strongest heroes in the game right now in the Troll Warlord. They've got one of the strongest supports as well, the Vengeful Spirit. Speaking of strong supports, Lion's still in the pool. Hasn't been touched, hasn't been banned. But Black Sheep will pick up Zeus. 
And although we saw it in mid last game, this could very well be a support Zeus, um, help with a little bit of the counter warding. Um, although it could also be run in the mid lane, it's it has the potential of stopping Tidehunter from being able to blink Ten in at that key time remaining. and using Thunder God's Wrath. Um, it also can exploit the weakness remaining. and the squish squishiness or squishability. That's definitely not a word, but we're going to use Reserve it of time. the Shadow Shaman. And potentially the Lena as well. If that's a support Lena, she's uh, not as uh, tanky as a, um, as a core Lena would be. And mainly that's... I mean, some of it has to do with the items, but for the most part, that's actually just because of the levels and, and the natural stat gain that Lena's going to get that's going to give her that bigger HP pool to be able to, uh, to deal with some of that burst damage coming out from a Zeus. But we'll have to Keeper wait a little bit further. Oh my goodness! What is this? Keeper of the Light now getting picked by Wheel. What? God, I love Coddle too, but I have no idea what they're doing. So, okay, adjusting what we what we know so far. Tidehunter. Off lane. Lena, mid then. Shadow Shaman, Keeper remaining. of the Light, support. Five seconds huh. remaining. Keeper of the Reserve Light kind of sucks in the lane when it's support, so that Shadow Shaman's going to be doing a lot of the Radiant zoning in the offlane by himself. I imagine the Keeper of the Light's going to be in the jungle stacking and, and doing more jungly kind of things. The one value of the Keeper of the Light is the fact that he's got Blinding Light, um, which is attached to his ultimate, but he's got Blinding Light, which Ten should be remaining. able to, um, well, kind of... Due to Troll Warlord, what he does to everyone else gives him that mischance so that he's not able to to land all those blows and, and make sure that everyone's doing all that damage. But obviously this is a, a little bit of a pocket strat that Wheel had planned to deal with the Troll Warlord in this situation. I, that Keeper of the Light didn't come out of nowhere. They, they knew that they were going to be picking this from, I'm guessing, a long ways out. Now they'll ban out the lion, but Black Sheep chose to go with the Magnus, and I'm I'm assuming that's going to be their off laner as well, which I think should do okay going up against a Shadow Shaman and, well, we don't know what that final um, safe lane hero is going to be. Um, the one downside to Magnus is he is remaining. potentially a little bit vulnerable to an early skill of mana leak Five coming out from the remaining. Keeper of the Light. Magnus, of course, very dependent on his mana to be able to skewer out when he's running the offlane. And he's not really able to get any CS from afar unless he uses his mana on Shockwave as well. So we'll, we'll look to see how Black Sheep's going to do with that, deal with that. I don't think the Keeper of the Light's going to go after a mana leak um, one, just one point in it early on as that really slows him down in his potential to run in the jungle. Radiant team. Final ban of the game is going to be on the Naga which is a hero that pairs incredibly well with Keeper of the Light. You have to go way back in, uh, in Dota 2 history at least to, uh, to when Keeper of the Light and Haga were played together. But that was a time when Tidehunter was getting played. That was a time when Shadow Shaman was getting a played. It wasn't a time when Lena was getting played, but she's kind of new to, uh, or, or at least fairly recent to Ten the meta. Seconds remaining. So we'll kind of... Five seconds remaining. Going, going back in the history books and, and picking some of the, the older kind of carries here. They're going to pick up a Medusa, which gives you that carry that's going to be able to scale really late into a game, similar to a Naga Siren. They do so in different ways, but same thing. We're going to go really, really late. It's a hero that's going to be able to scale and go up against the Troll Warlord perfectly fine, but immediately Black Sheep counters that with the Nyx Assassin, so I think they had a feeling that, Med that Medusa was potentially going to be coming out there, and uh, they immediately pick up that Nyx Assassin to, of course, counter her, because you can do the Mana Burn, and if you remove Medusa's Mana Pool, then you're also essentially, effectively removing some of her HP, or eff effective HP, I should say. But interesting lineup from Black Sheep is we've got... I'm assuming Troll Warlord in the safe lane with Ventral Spirit and Nyx Assassin? Uh, no. Ten I don't know. It, it depends. Remaining. They could... Meg could be mid. Five seconds remaining. Or offlane. If Meg's mid, it's going to be Nyx offlane Zeus support. 
We have a DC of everyone. Can we remake after our fifth just showed up? Okay. Aha! So we'll join into this game here in a second, but if if the Magnus is mid, then the Nyx is offlane and the Zeus is support. If the Zeus is mid, the Magnus is offlane and the Nyx is support. There's the possibility that they do neither of those, but I think it's going to be one of those two variations. So we actually don't know between those three heroes who's doing what. Um, we do know one of the two supports could potentially be the Zeus or the Nyx. We do know that. It's not like it's going to be Magnus support. But uh, it's interesting draft. Very, very interesting, interesting draft coming out from them. Uh, one of the advantages of potentially running the Zeus in the mid lane and having the effectively the Nyx's support would be that you're going to uh, you're going to be able to, like I said a little bit earlier, exploit some of that squishiness or squishability. I think was the word I use of uh, the Rasta or the Shadow Shaman, I should say, and uh, now actually the Caudal as well. Um, but Nyx can do that as well. That's the interesting part because if you then put Zeus support, Nyx would be in the off lane and he would get that. Uh, Get those levels under his belt, and he would also be able to pick off those heroes a little bit better. So it'd be it's it's interesting, very very interesting to see how Black Sheep's going to choose to go with this. So they they got their fifth, and apparently it's Dank Mech. He's going to be uh, stepping in and, and replacing Grand Grant. We got everyone picking their heroes here, and now we just they're not spamming Alt Enter. We got to wait. We gotta wait for the timer up here at the top is well they remade and they just remade an all pick and actually if everyone hits alt enter which like preloads your hero into the game um which gets rid of some of that um i believe it's alt enter i don't know i just kind of hit it on the keyboard but it, it preloads your hero into the game so you know when you normally get into a pub game and there's that little bit of stutter every time it uh people like select their hero and jump on into the game there's that little bit of pause that kind of preloads it and gets it out of the way and if everyone does that in the AP um, then the game will actually start prior to that timer Prepare for but either battle. way we're into the game anyways it wasn't that long of a wait let's introduce the teams and the players once again this is the Dota 2 Canada Cup we are in group B this is group stage this is our second game of group B as uh, Wheel has already taken a game in the group thus far Black Sheep this is their first game so they're going to look to to start off on the right foot. But we've got Wheel on the Radiant side. And playing their Keeper of the Light is going to be Derp Derp. Ix Mike is going to be on that Tide Hunter. Relic is going to be on the Medusa. Goody is going to be on the Shadow Shaman. As he's going to walk right on into the enemies here. As he's going to get stunned up. And this could be, and it is indeed, our first by blood. Right. As Hitch is going to get as that well on the Zeus. Now we got a continuing battle going on here. Sleazel will land the LSA onto Enzo, but now he's going to get stunned up, and he's going to go down. So two heroes already going down on the side of Wheel. Derp Derp taking a little bit of harass damage, but he should be fine. There was an Observer Ward placed fairly aggressively in the Radiant Jungle. So Black Sheep not only able to get that Observer Ward down where they wanted it, but also getting first blood and another kill on top of that. Now they're also going to be able to secure this bottom rune where we've got a battle going on in the top lane forward as well. As who's going to win this? It's going to be the Troll Whirler. He's the one with the faster fingers. So both runes actually going to a Black Sheep as well. They're off to a great start this game. But let's quickly introduce all those players. So we got Goody on the Shadow Shaman. We saw him go down for first blood. Sleazel was the other one who went down. He's going to be on the Lena. For our dire side, we got Team Black Sheep. Playing their Magnus is going to be Enzo. Ha 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 ha. Or I think I said too many of those. But either way, it's going to be he's going to be on the Troll Warlord. Chrysalid is going to be on the Vengeful Spirit. Dank Mech is going to be on the Nyx Assassin. And Hitch is going to be on the Zeus. As for starting items, eh, nothing too unusual here. We've got uh, Zeus rushing for his... Uh, uh, soul ring and uh, besides that we've got only one smoke and that's gonna be the one on keeper of the light as you see goody taking advantage of those shackles but more so to allow derp derp to channel that illuminate 
to uh, to hit him with that Caudal Blast and get some good damage on that Nyx Assassin. What are the values of running the lanes like this and having the Nyx in the off lane over having um, the Mag in the off lane? Is that Nyx is able to deal with the Caudal Blast a little bit better. If he has a fast enough reaction time um, from a Caudal Blast coming out over the trees, whether it's from the left or the right position, he can just pop his Spike Carapace and that'll reflect the damage to Keeper of the Light. Um, and of course, if he's if he gets hit with a shackle, immediately coming out of the shackle, he can just hit that. So the, the Caudal Blast will have to land before the shackle uh, finishes, which means he's not going to be able to, to channel it for long. Well, that's one of the, the other kind of advantages of putting that uh, Nyx Assassin in the offlane. But uh, one of the more interesting things is if we take Ryan's a look at the lanes, we've got Keeper of the attack. Light, Lena which is farming in the spot of lane and Shadow Shaman going up against that Nyx Assassin. That leaves our Medusa in the mid lane going up against the Magnus. Top lane is the Tidehunter going up against Zeus, Troll Warlord, and the Eventual Spirit that just rotated away to pick up the top rune, which is Bounty. And uh, the bottom rune was just Illusion. Illusion also gets claimed by Black Sheep. So Black Sheep, 4 for 4 so far with terms of runes. We're going to see Ix might get stunned up here. Nice rotation from Chrysalid as he uh, came in from behind. Ix Mike was already slowed up by the axes, the ranged axes from the Troll Warlord. And that's a third kill for Black Sheep as Black Sheep looking real good so far. Chrysalid continuing with the pressure, making a rotation towards mid. Maybe not. He's just going to place an Observer Ward instead to, uh, to spot out that top rune and also give them a little bit more vision. So typically you want your Observer Ward between the enemy tri-lane and your mid because that's the place that the rotations are typically going to be coming from. We saw him place this one up in the top rune location instead, but that's okay because they've got this Observer Ward which gives you a ton of information of, about those rotations. We see Wheel trying to find that Observer Ward because not only does it give you that information, but it also blocks. It's at the very leftmost edge of the spawn box for this neutral camp. If you think of all the spawn boxes in the game being squares, which they are, and you think of where the magic bush is, it's right here. It is essentially right on the edge there for you. So just inside that box, and it makes it very difficult to counter ward. But if they do elect to, to drop another sentry, they should potentially be able to find it. There are two potential locations where it could be, and they actually unfortunately miss it here. So little advantage there going in favor of Black Sheep again as seems like every advantage is going their way. Derp Derp did elect to actually get a point into Mana Leak early on. So he does have that. Um, that means he doesn't have the point into Chakra Magic, which is okay. Um, he elected to only... Hit, well, I, I'm not sure exactly how many he started with. I, I don't remember. But uh, he only has one Clarity now. And without Chakra Magic, that Dyer's means he's not going to be able to sustain this mana attack. as well. But uh, it should be okay right now. He doesn't really need to be spamming all that much. Especially going up against a Nyx Assassin that, well, has no mana thanks to the Mana Leak. So he's going to be able to harass him back with just those right clicks. We've got Ix Mike once again abandoning the top lane, making his way down to his jungle. As uh, he's once again picked into a, a little bit of a difficult lane for an off laner. And he's just going to be jungling instead. Relic seemingly having a very easy time in the mid lane, but that's to be expected. Deuce is going to get a lot of CS in this lane. Not much that Magnus is going to be able to do to really stop that. The important part is that Magnus is getting, doing okay himself. He's at 23 CS. Yes, that's uh, 9 less than the Medusa was at. But it's important that he's getting the CS and getting the XP that he needs to uh, be able to to do big things coming out of the laning phase. He needs to be able to get his core items up, get closer and closer towards that blink, tag, blink dagger timing. And once he has that, that means he can set up the RPs. That means he can move around the map and do things. Um, until he has that blink, yeah, he can do some of that with uh, a little bit of setup from his team and a little bit of uh, good kind of skewer use, but uh, it's just so much more effective with the blink dagger. So it's important that he's able to get as much as he can in that mid lane. He did just get sent back to Fountain, but he'll just TP back to the lane, and he won't actually miss too much. So the Radiant actually choosing to place an Observer Ward here up on the high ground, 
And what that's going to do is it's going to allow Relic to keep pressure onto Enso. That means Enso isn't safe just standing up here on his high ground. Relic is going to have vision, so he's going to be able to right click him rather than normally where he'd be standing in the fog and Relic wouldn't be able to have the vision. Pax might getting quite low against the neutral creeps. But uh, he'll just take a quick trip back to the fountain, get his HP back up. And once again, Relic continuing to bully here as he's picked up a double damage rune. And unfortunately, that means Enso wasn't able to refill his bottle. And he's going to have to use a little bit of it to get his HP pull back up. Radiance top take a look right now, he's already at 1,000 gold. So he's got his boots, he's got his bottle. That's basically his uh, arcane boots. So doing quite well in the mid lane. And I, and I think he will actually get his arcane boots rather than skipping them and going straight for blink. So because Ix Mike abandoned the top lane, that frees up Radiance the supports to move around a little attack. bit more as we see Zeus actually Radiance rotating right to the bottom lane. Fortified. So it's going to be a dual lane down here for Black Sheep going up against this tri lane. And I mean, that should help them get a little bit more. Ix Mike, after going to that fountain, has actually gone back up to the top lane as there was a, a little bit of pressure getting applied to the tier one. So he wants to come up here and soak up that XP and a little bit of gold that he can get from those neutrals, or sorry, from those creeps that were attacking the tower. Crystal just kind of doing some stacking, doesn't... Hasn't really been moving around too much, he's just kind of been parked up here making sure that the troll gets everything he can. Uh, Hitch and Dank Mac have found this Observer Ward. They did get some damage on it, but weren't able to, uh, to take it down. Goody getting quite, quite low. But uh, 32 HP is more than enough to survive, so he'll be okay. And uh, he'll just rely on some regen to get his HP pool back up. Never mind, he's going to just Dyer's TP back to the fountain instead. Under attack. He did so by walking in here, buying a TP, and then TPing away so that uh, they actually don't know where he is. Um, but they should know, based on the current state of regen in this lane, that he's probably going to either walk back or... Um, He's going to be very passive for the next little while. Relic once again bullying, but this time Enso managing to get to bottle up the bounty rune to replenish that bottle. It's so so important for that mag. Of course, you know you can constantly do it with bottle crowing, but it's just a little bit more efficient if you if you're able to get the runes. Assuming you're able to get them at the right time, you can't be missing XP or anything in the lane. And we're going to see a setup here as Sleazel is going to come out of Invis with the Light Strike Array onto Enso. Goody is going to not able to use any of his CC, but he will get off the, what's it called, Fork Lightning? Aethershock. Ah, close. And uh, Relic will also combine for the kill there. Laguna was used as it looked like Enso might have possibly been able to get away there if Laguna wasn't used, so better safe than sorry. Well, let's take a look at our Dyer's middle levels here. Is, ooh, we actually get Ix Mike going down. I was just going to check his his progression in terms of his level in a second, but he's he's Radiant's just past level five, is under attack. but a third of the way to level six. So he's a little bit ahead of the Nyx Assassin, but both of them are going to uh, be hitting six relatively around the same time, and that's when they're going to both start moving around the map. Um, Ix Mike may Radiant's choose not to move around fallen. as aggressively as the Nyx Assassin, but I expect the Nyx to, to be moving and, and really trying to get some kills. Radiant's top In fact, tower he's going to do that attack. before six. Is they've made their way into their jungle, that gets them an Observer Ward that they're able to place up. They've also pinged out the fact that there's a stack here, so they're going to want to take that. It's just a double, but still, it's something that if you can take from your opponents, why not? And if you're... You're three down here, not only are you taking control of the enemy jungle, but you're also farming effic more efficiently as well. So three man rotation down here, they're going to try to open up onto Goody, but Goody gets the CC off in time with a nice TP coming in from Sleazel. It's going to be a complete turnaround, it's going to be a double for Wheel, as Dank Mech and Chrysalid both go down. Sleazel and Goody with the kills. Great play coming up from Wheel there. I'll put a little bit of pressure on this tier 1 tower, but Relic now being left alone completely in the mid lane as he's putting pressure on the mid tower. We will get Dank Mech TPing on in to soak up a little bit of his XP. But with Enso respawning, he'll also, uh, or not respawning, but Enso will TP back to the mid Dyer's lane. Bottom tower is under attack. 
Bristler now making his way down. Glyph's gonna get used from the dire side. And that's just to prevent a little bit of this damage coming out from Sleaze on the bottom lane. Dyer's they really want to keep these tower towers up as much attack. as they can. Because that's the some pretty vital gold that uh, the Radiant side's gonna be looking for. Of course, they've got some really important item timings that they're gonna be looking for. Um, the Ravage, or sorry, the Blink on the, the Tidehunter so we can Blink Ravage, but also the Yule Scepter on the Lina. And just one tower falling actually accelerates that quite a bit. Switching over to the net worth, you can see the troll out to a little bit of a lead, about a thousand uh, net worth ahead of anyone else. And that's ahead of Sleazel, but next in line, in fact, almost tied with the Lena, is going to be Relic on the Dusa. And then it's a little bit of a drop down to the Magnus at 3.8k. Well, we're going to see a little bit of counter warding here as they once again drop that Observer Ward. And I think, was that, a, was that a fresh one? I'm not sure. How's Alex Mike doing? 1300 gold. He's getting closer and closer to his Blink Dagger. In fact, he's further away now as he just purchased his Arcane Boots. So electing to go for those. And that's okay, because what that's going to do is actually allow him to farm a little bit faster. Um, so you actually, you it's not like you're you're set back a full thousand gold. You're actually set back essentially... Monetarily, you are set back a thousand gold, but in terms of time, um, you're set back less because you're able to farm faster, you're able to raise that GPM, and that means that your Blink Dagger is going to come out effectively quicker than it would if, uh, well, if it just cost a thousand gold more than it already does. We will get Tranquils and a Soul Ring purchased up here by the Rasta, and we've got three heroes sitting here in the mid lane. And I think they think some pressure is going to be coming. In fact, a fourth one is going to TP on in. So obviously they're trying to get something done here. They will use Radiant's the smoke. Bottom tower is under and attack. Thunder God's Wrath is going to come out right after it. And yeah, they pinged out the fact that they were here and smoked. Yeah, there, there so we were actually thinking that uh, Troll was going to be in Roche, attack. but that's not the case. And real interesting. Real, real interesting, the, the, that series of events that just happened. So we had four people on wheel grouping up in the mid lane because they wanted to smoke because they thought Troll was doing Roche. Because Troll wasn't on the map. Because those heroes of wheel weren't on the map, the Thunder God's Wrath came out. Because the Thunder God's Wrath came out, that further uh, strengthened the belief of wheel that Troll was doing Roche. Really, really interesting series of events there, but in the end, nothing actually happens. So that's, that's the one thing I love about Dota. There's so many of these little teeny things that go on that are actually aren't that teeny in, in the grand scheme of things. It's really awesome. Hitch is going to take a fall here. Sleazel starting to show the value of that Cordelina as soon as you get that Yule Scepter timing. Uh, as soon as you get that Yule Scepter up, and I, I spoke about that timing a little bit earlier earlier about how important that is and how big that timing is for the Lena and we see that getting put to use immediately by Sleazel. Well, Dank Mech hasn't really done too much with the Vendetta. In fact, he's going to get caught out here and now he's not going to have any mana to Vendetta as it comes off cooldown. Never mind, he's able, he did just have enough mana to get the Arcane Boots off. Of course, the cast of Arcane Boots costs 35 mana, Dyer's so it's effect effectively less effective at restoring mana on you than it is you restoring it to your teammates, by the way. Um, but yeah, that just gave him enough mana to Vendetta away there. And if he didn't have that, he was he was pretty much dead for sure. Looks like a troll is going to start farming up here in the ancient camps. He's going to stack it once and then will he farm it or will they go attack. bottom? Yeah, it looks like they will farm it. We'll be very diligent attack. about checking the Roche pit. They know that this is a dire side troll. and I mean, it, you have to know just going up against a troll to begin with, but the fact that it is a dire side troll, that it's so, so easy for him just to buy a smoke and hop on in there. So they have to constantly be checking. There is a smoke on the dire side. It's not on the troll warlord, it's on the Magnus. And that's going to help them potentially be able to set up a good blink RP. And they might look to do that here in the bottom Radiant's lane as Wheel's looking like they're going to be pushing. 
And so, being here is no surprise. They know he's here. Dyer's structures are fortified. They're going to use the glyph to delay this timing a little bit, but it's not at 130 HP yet, so it's actually not deniable. They glyphed maybe a little early there. As typically, you'd, you'd want to glyph once it hits that 130 HP Radiant mark, um, because then attack. you're you're kind of forcing your opponents to commit. You know, they've got to try to stick Dyer's around, or you're going to be able to get that easy deny. Attack. In the end. It's just a free tower. Four wheel is, is Black Sheep choosing not to engage fortified. there. Mid lane troll getting tossed up in the air with that Yule Scepter. He'll land into an LSA followed by a Dragon Slave and a Laguna. Will he be able to... Oh no, he's not going to get him! 36 HP though! Oh, the Dragon Slave just doesn't have enough range. Enso jumps in with the RP. Will skewer Sleasel back up onto the high ground, but then he'll get stunned up. And in the end, RP doesn't really do much there. Laguna didn't really net them a kill. We got action in the bottom lane. Very lost Derp Derp Hitch getting quite low. There's a huge Ravage coming out for my ex Mike. It'll catch three. And with those two heroes down, we did lose the Coddle as well. We'll, we'll look to, to kind of stand behind these Serpent Wards and try and take a positioning on this tier 2 tower. Looks like they won't because they're just going to completely back away. That's going to be some free farm for the Troll Warlord. 30 gold for every single one of those Serpent Wards. It's, it's in around 30 gold, roughly 30 gold for each one. That's a lot of gold when you add it all up. How many Serpent Wards actually is it at level 1? 10. Oh yeah, it changes with uh, Egg Scepter. Man, I'm such a noob. <laughs> so yeah, that's like 300 gold they just gave to the Troll Warlord by, by walking away from those Serpent Wards. And I think that's something that's really underestimated. Um, when you're playing Rasta or, or you've got a Rasta on your team is just how easily sometimes you, you kind of give that to your opponent. Oh, Dank Mech opening up on Derp Derp out of Vendetta, but unfortunately missing the stun. He's going to get stunned up himself, followed by a Laguna Sleazel. Starting to snowball on the Lena. 4-1-1 one, one right now. Obviously would have preferred to get that kill on Troll and be 5-1-1, one, one, but... Ah ha ha, just barely survived. I, can't, I still can't believe that. That was 30 HP. See a little bit of counter warding coming out here with the Zeus Lightning Bolt. And they're not hiding it. They just walked straight into the Roche Pit and said, You know what, guys? We're going in here. Come fight us. Sleazel is smoked up. In fact, it will get popped by Chrysalid. They're making a move towards mid, but it's actually Sleazel just trying to run away. Roche will fall. Troll will get the Aegis. So good play by Black Sheep. Recognizing the fact that they could just... They were just in an optimal position to take Roche. Their opponents were a little bit too far away to really be able to contest it. And they, they took it. It's just... That's, that's some really good awareness. And really good Dota sense. To, uh, to be able to take that in that moment. Is under attack. And we'll see another set of Serpent Wards drop to try and put some pressure on this tier 1 tower. Sleazel will use his Yules, but it's on an illusion of a Magnus. And unfortunately, Dankmech just not able to get Dyer's there in time. His, uh, his little bug feet couldn't move him fast enough to get there. And that means Sleazel will just be able to walk away. And those Serpent Wards did claim that tier 1 tower. Well, will Black Sheep actually be able to come up here and farm? It doesn't look like either of the sports are going to be farming them. Dyer's on the mid lane, tower mid tower, mid tier one dropping to deny range. Hex getting used by Goody onto the Troll Warlord who will jump on in. He's going to pop the BKB. He's just going to man fight them. He's going to get a double here as both supports for wheel just get demolished by the Troll Warlord. And then the tower goes down as well. Dyer's Fair and balanced hero, attack. apparently. <laughs> but good. Dota sense there as well. Coming out from ha ha ha. Oh my. He said, what are these clowns doing? Pops his BKB. Spins a bunch of axes around him. And just goes ham. Dropping both the supports. We're going to see Relic getting scouted out here by Dank Mech as he's sitting in Viz. And they're going to open up on it. It's going to for force Ike's Mike to throw out the Ravage. It will land on three, but it's more so a defensive Ravage. Actually, it could be offensive in the end as Black Sheep has maybe overextended here. No, it looks like we're going to have him disengage. Or are we? Sleazel in the back. He has double damage. Has he been scouted as he walked up the ramp there? I don't think he is. 
But he's going to try to TP away here. He will be able to TP. They're not going to be able to to uh, interrupt them. The Blink Dagger had already been used by the Magnus, and there isn't a Blink Dagger on the Nyx as of yet. Great play coming up from both these teams. Just, just to be able to recognize that, there was a moment there where Black Sheep had potentially overextended, but it was only a very slight overextension. And yes, there was potentially a, a timing there, a split second where Wheel could have snapped and uh, engaged on them and punished them Radiant's for that overextension. But that time had come and passed, and Dyer's it was very, very slight. But it's important that Wheel didn't try to force it. You know, they could have kept chasing. They knew that Sleazel was in behind, Radiant's but they played smart. They played responsibly, and they just kind of backed away. They realized, you know what? We don't have to force this. What are we fighting over? This isn't necessarily a mo the most advantageous position for us. And they chose Dyer's not to force it and not to take attack. that fight. And in the end, I think that was actually the right decision. They'd already used Ravage. They were going to be fighting up against an RP going into Dyer's a pretty choked off area attack. and it just wouldn't have been uh, good overall well I haven't looked at the gold graph yet so let's Dyer's bring that up and see where we stand attack. and it's well it's Radiant's it's a fairly close game and the, the net worth shows that as well as so it's about 1700 maybe 1600 gold in favor of Dyer's wheel top tower is under attack. XP is actually in favor Radiant's of black sheep as we're gonna see Thunder God's wrath go out as we've got a smoke from three heroes on Black Sheep, but they're just smoking to get down here and meet up with their troll in the Nyx that are already putting some pressure on this tier 2 tower. Wheel already has a few heroes down here. They've got three. As Ike, Mike, Goody, and Derp Derp are going to try and defend this tower while they've got some push going on in the top lane from Relic and Sleazel. I think we're going to end up with probably just a tier Dyer's 2 trade here. As I think these three attack. towers are just going to relinquish Radiant's this little position. And once you've attack. lost that, there's pretty much no way you're going to be able Radiant to turn that tower. They will fortified. use the glyph though. The top tier 2 will Dyer's go down. Now the bottom tier 2 is going to go down as well. So it is just Radiant's a trade in the end. The troll fallen. losing a little bit of HP, but he does still have that Aegis. So it's not really the, the scariest thing in the world. We'll quickly cycle through our items, see what we got. The Coddle. Just has Tranquils and uh, something flying on the career here. Just another set of wards, both OBS and Revelations. We we'll like to see eventually the Coddle work towards an Egg Scepter, being able to heal up his allies with that Illuminate. Whether he even chooses to go with that or not will uh, remain to be seen, but it's it's going to be quite a ways out. He, he has 900 gold right now, so that's a step in the right direction, but it's still a long ways out. As for Ix Mike on the Tide Hunter, Hasn't gone for Blink, hasn't gone for Mech, which are the two standard items for a Tidehunter. He's gone with a Bloodstone. Really weird and unusual pick. Not sure if I agree with it, not sure how to justify it, but obviously he had a decision, or he had a reason to go for it in his mind. It's going to give him some good regen. It's going to allow him to farm faster, I guess. I don't know, I feel like I feel like the positioning, being able to ravage is gonna be incredibly important there. But maybe he sees it as you know what? I don't need to be initiating um, with the ravage. I'm gonna be able to get a lot of counter initiates based on the lineup that we're going up against. There's a Nyx, there's a Magnus. They're gonna be the ones that are gonna be the ones initiating. I'm gonna be able to counter initiate. So maybe I can do that without a blink dagger. Sometimes you'll elect to go with the cheaper um, option and maybe more versatile option with the four staff instead of the blink in that situation. It also has an easier build up, but he elects to go with neither of those. And uh, and then and then sometimes you also go for the mech there as well. But bloodstone, weird. Espresso shot in chat says easy team heals and, and yeah maybe that's the case too right. The Tide Hunter goes on in, you know, throws the Ravage, and if you kill him, he's just going to heal everyone around him. So I guess it's somewhat like a mech, too. Interesting. But moving on, we've got Relic with the Manta. And 3,600 gold on hand. His farm hasn't been the quickest. He's just about to break the 200 CS barrier, but it's 25 minutes in. That's a little slow. But uh, he's, he's still doing okay as he's our second highest net worth in the game, but he's fallen quite a bit behind the Troll Warlord. 
He's at 17.5k. My goodness. We almost have an egg scepter finished on Goody here. He's about 650 away from completing that. Just needs the, the Blade of Alacrity. And our last one for the Radiant Side Sleasel. He's got his Yules, but he's also added an Egg Scepter on top of that. And that's going to allow his Laguna Blade to do pure damage. So it's going to pierce through the BKB on the Troll Warlord. And, uh, well, any kind of magic immunity. And that should allow them to drop um, Troll. And, and Troll won't be able to feel as safe once he pops that BKB and tries to go crazy. As for our Dire Side, and so has... The Blink Dagger, which he picked up quite a while ago, but he's also got an Ogre Club as well. So maybe working towards a BKB, and I'm guessing that would be the option that he's going to go for. Dank Mech. He's in Vendetta. He's going to try to hunt down Derp Derp here, but not able to get there in time. There was this Sentry Ward that actually did spot him out with the Caudal Vision. Dank Mech does have a Blink Dagger. did just pick that up maybe a minute and a half ago as I was going over some of the other items. So he does have that to be able to blink himself and put himself in maybe a better position to get a nice line stun from that impale. Skipped over our troll warlord there for a second, but he's got a ton of items. SNY, BKB, Scotty, and a morbid mask to go with his phase boots and uh, ring of Aquila. And he's got another 1300 gold as well. That's uh that's a, that's a pretty beefy Troll Warlord at this point in the game. As for Ventral Spirit, we've got an Urn. And just your typical support items, just regular boots. And last but not least, our Zeus. He's, uh, he's, got a, he's got his Tranquils and his Soul Ring, which he started with. But he's since picked up a four Staff, and he's also got another 1,500 gold. So he's, uh, he's doing all right for himself as well. There's no one who's really too poor in this game. You know, we see the Ventral Spirit and the Caudal kind of low on that list, but I wouldn't call them poor in the sense of what we normally would associate with poor in, in a game like this. Like, you see a big discrepancy between them and the top net worths, but they don't feel that far out of the game. It doesn't feel like anyone's really struggling in this game, and that really kind of speaks to uh, the skill level of these supports. Even if they've they've died a few times, they're not kind of falling behind. 0, 2, and 2 in Coddle, not a very impressive score, but he's still doing perfectly fine for himself. 1, 2, and 2 on the Venge, not that impressive, but still doing fine for himself. But they're also not farm, uh, feeding at the same time. Hyx Mike also picked up a Ghost Scepter, which is worth noting as well. But I, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know the, the, the Bloodstone. And according to chat, Dota Tom says uh, he started doing that recently in a pub. Pub games, according to Dota Buff. So obviously, Ix Mike experimenting with this Bloodstone. And uh, yeah, giving, giving it a shot. Apparently, this is also the first time ever in a comp game that uh, Bloodstone has been picked up by a Tidehunter and that's that's no surprise to me as uh, I, I struggle to uh, I struggle to, to kind of justify the item pickup but I mean IX Mike he's he's been to the international he's he's a very good player so obviously he has his justifications for not only picking it up this game but also experimenting with it in pubs and maybe he's found something that you know, everyone else is kind of overlooked, and we don't we don't understand it yet. But obviously, he does. It's it kind of. I always use this as a good example, but you think of Juggernaut, and you think of a year ago, and if you had only put one point in your spin and not max spin, the flame you would have got from all your teammates. And now it's like. Oh my god, you put more than one point in spin, now you're going to get flamed. And it's the complete opposite, complete opposite thinking. And that's just one of those things, you know, nothing's changed about the skill. It's just someone found a different way to build Jug and they thought it to be more effective. And now that's, that's the way that everyone plays Jug. So it's interesting how something like that can just kind of take Dota and turn it upside down. And maybe, maybe it's a little, little bit bold to think of the Bloodstone pickup on the uh, the Tide Hunter as such, but it's kind of maybe the same thing to a, a lesser degree. Relic has added Aya Scotty to his pool since we last checked, and we just got the Egg Scepter finished by Goody. So those 
Mass Serpent Ward's going to be able to do more in the team fight. And on top of that, we got a Blink Dagger coming out from Hitch. Now Black Sheep constantly in this Roche pit. And they're actually going to be able to take Roche as soon as he spawns there. As uh, they'll drop this. And there's no way that Wheel's going to be able to get there in time. I imagine this is going to go on the troll once Your again. Indeed it will. Fallen to the dire. As he had already dropped his Ring of Aquila. So that was kind of... That was an easy prediction. Well, Hitch will go down as he falls Dyer's victim to the Yules. LSA, Dragon Slave, Laguna combo coming out from Sleazel. And so just delivered his BKB and uh, good use there of the Coddle ultimate there. Bringing back Sleazel as they kind of got separated there as uh, the Coddle was kind Dyer's of escaping through the natural root of uh, the top tier one, or the top tier one, what am I talking about, top lane, and Sleazel was kind of zigzagging through the, the jungle, and he was in pers being pursued by a Magnus, so just kind of TPs him back to him, goes through the safer route, IX Mike, getting some use out of that Ghost Scepter, man he's tanky, now Relic will pop in with the Stone Gaze, and that'll just force the Troll Warlord to to turn around and, and, and step away, but it looks to actually re-engage with Dank Mech as Dank Mech blink forward, but they weren't able to uh, to really put that, keep that pressure onto the the Medusa. She's just going to make her way back towards the mid lane and keep farming. Ike's Mike's so tanky. He also picked up a jacket. Oh, that's what I like to call it. It's called a cloak. Um, so he's got even more tank ability now going up against the magic damage, and that's a pretty big pickup going up against the Zeus as Zeus does so much damage. He's definitely, even when he's played in a support role, one of the highest damage dealing supports there is. And it all comes back to what I was mentioning in the game pre previous to this, the static field. It scales so, so well on the Zeus. He actually put a third point in Arc Light, and that's interesting. Maybe it's miss skill, maybe... I don't know. I don't know why we, he would have put the third. Typically, you, you only put two. Max... Well, you obviously max Lightning Bolt first, but you put two points into Arc Lightning and then you max Static Field, Static Field, and then you potentially go back and put that uh, third and fourth point into Arc Lightning. Some players actually will just stack the stats instead. Once again, Coddle porting back Sleazels. He was getting ganked. Five heroes from Black Sheep were making the rotation up here. But that lean is already gone. In fact, I think she would have even just been able to TP on out because they got there a little bit late. Well, Sleazel with the BKB now as well. He's gonna put some pressure on his bottom lane. And actually, I didn't see the HP pool of the Nyx Assassin, but obviously he was low. As Sleazel just walks up Lagunas and... That's it. That's one dead bug. And now Serpent Wards will come down. As they put more pressure onto this tier 2, but so will some TP support coming in. Yule's getting used onto the Troll Warlord. And the tower will go down, not gonna get denied. As a, there was a deny that came out there, but it was on the creep, so obviously a little bit of a misclick there. And uh, the attack was on the creep and not on the tower, so that's a little unfortunate for the side of Black Sheep. But props goes to Wheel. They, uh, they recognized the fact that there was that rotation coming up to potentially kill the, the Lena that was up here that got ported away. But Lena got ported directly across Dyer's the map, all the way to the bottom lane, fallen. then they go and put some pressure on there. They realize the Black Sheep's going to be a little slow to re rotate and respond, and just took advantage of that. Gold Good play me. coming out from Wheel. Take a look at the net worth, see where we stand. Wheel has been pulling ahead, but not very quickly, but they are ahead nonetheless. Some of that gap is going to be changed a little bit there as we lose the Coddle. But still, about 6,000 in favor of Wheel. XP, just under 3,000 in favor of Wheel as well. Take a quick look at our hero levels. Everyone's hit 11 in the game. We've got Magnus approaching level 16, but the important one, well, the most important one, I should say, is, is Alina, who's already hit 16 as well. But you can see just how far ahead that Troll Warlord is. He's already level 21. Top tower is under Medusa, attack. just 18. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. My goodness. It, it's interesting. I, you take a look at this net worth, you take a look at that level, you think Troll running away with the game, but it hasn't felt like that. 
Now Relic starting the TP, forcing out that RP. And now he'll try to walk away. I don't think he's going to be able to get away. He's going to get slowed down by those axes. And they didn't get in front to, to get the body blocks, but they're not going to need it as a stun comes out from Dank Mech. And that's going to allow them more than enough time to to burn through that HP pool of the Medusa. He just, just, get claim, just got claimed. We've got about four and a half minutes until Roche is going to be up. So mark, mark your, your clocks. 38.30 is when Roche is going to be coming on up. Drip Drip made a little bit of progress towards that Egg Scepter. He's got two of the items and another 650 gold. He's going to be up almost at around 800 gold when he kills off this. In fact, 802. Man, I'm pretty good at that. I Just ignore that. Just ignore that little creep that gave him a little bit more. Just over 800. <laughs> but either way, that's going to put him closer to his Egg Scepter. Radiance and uh, about 1100 gold. We're attack. going to see that coming out for him. And that's going to make his Illuminates heal teammates. It's really cool. Really cool change. I love when they added that functionality to the Egg Scepter for Radiance the Keeper of the Light. Looks like Black Sheep has positioned themselves quite well for this Tier 2 tower without Wheel really re-engaging. Derp Derp's going to step back and lay down a Caudal Blast, but Radiance it's not really going to do much besides fallen. just wiping out the Creep Wave, which I don't think Black Sheep was going to, uh, was going to look to push to the high ground or, or put some pressure on that Tier 3 with at least. They did bring back Sleazel on the Lena from the bottom line as she was pushing, putting some pressure and making sure that their creep wave was going in the right direction. Black Sheep had pinged out that they were going to potentially go for the tier 2, but looks like they've backed away from that and just uh, taking the opportunity to farm a little bit of the Radiant Jungle as they exit. Now Dankmech will pop the Vendetta and he's hunting for the Lena as uh, he th potentially thinks that she's still here. Obviously Sleazel hasn't shown. It's getting ported back. But he'll show now. And yeah, I mean, Dank Max already checked all the places that he, he would have figured anyways. Or he won't actually open up onto the creeps. He's, he'll just stay in the jungle here and not actually reveal his positioning. In fact, he's still actually searching. He's not going to find anything, but just kind of staying off the map there is actually quite important because if you're showing, like, you know, Sleazel was showing in the mid lane there, your opponents know where you are. When you're not showing, you haven't shown on the map, he hadn't shown since he got ported back, that, you know, leads your opponents to believe that maybe you're still out there. Maybe, you know, you're not in that position on the map. And they, they go, spend a little bit of their time trying to hunt, hunt you down and try and find you. And that's, in the end, that's kind of advantage you because your opponents are essentially wasting time. Oh, Dank Knight got a little too close to the tower there, and that gave them the vision, and he's going to get caught out. And he'll take a fall. In fact, it wasn't the tower vision. It was the gem. I was going to say, it was... It was pretty close. It was pretty close. It was somewhere around here where he got caught out, and that is very close to the vision. I wish I could actually see the vision. There's, there's markers all over the map that will actually tell you. Um, like on the the tile set and stuff. I'm trying to Yeah, it's kind of hard to, to see with the the lights out because of the fog of war But there are little markers on the map that'll actually tell you the the range of uh, the towers and and all that But either way he uh, Well, he got caught out and I'm, I'm sure that they know that the gem is out on uh, on IX Mike not sure when he picked that up but there's going to be a gem picked up on the side of the dire as well as the Vengeful Spirit's going to be purchasing that. I don't think she'll be the one holding it. In fact, Dank Mech is going to pick that up from the stash. And we've got a more important item pick up than the gem, and that's the Refresher on the Tidehunter. Still doesn't have a way to put himself in a better position to get those Ravages off, but uh, he will be able to get them because of how these team fights are going to formulate. And we've seen him get some pretty good ones thus far. So now he's going to be able to, well, get two of them. Relic has picked up an MKB. Oh, Derp Derp, so close. 200 gold. 
Oh, he needs to be careful here. Black Sheep kind of close. In fact, Black Sheep just going to walk right into the pit. And we're going to get a Caudal Blaster flying on in there, but they're not going to be able to know or engage in time. As Roche is already going to go down. That's going to be an Aegis for the Troll Warlord. Cheese is actually just completely left on the ground. They forgot about it, maybe? Either way, they're going to look to engage here. Enzo trying to lay down the RP will cancel it. Because it was just Derp Derp. They're going to be able to get that kill without it. But they, they completely forgot about the cheese. The courier's not flying out to pick it up. Yeah, I think they just forgot. Interesting. Interesting to see if uh, they, they remember and go back for it, or, or maybe Wheel realizes, hey, no one, no one on their team has got cheese in their inventory. Either way, Haha -ha somehow still has space in his inventory. He just has room for that Aegis. In fact, he's going to be upgrading his boots Two boots of travels. They're flying in on the courier right now. BKB. Okay. There we go. I was going to say SNY, which he's actually sending back. Looks like he's going to be selling that. But BKB and Daedalus, as well as a Satanic and a Scotty, will be his items. Career flew back. Is he going to sell it? Uh, maybe not. He may just choose to hold on to that until uh, the Aegis goes down and just replace it in his inventory. As that's definitely better than having an empty slot. That's for damn sure. Let's quickly bring up our item chart here and see if there's anything that I've missed. I don't think so. Yeah, it's getting pinged out. The cheese still there. Uh, I don't think anything's new that I've missed. We do have an ultimate orb on Sleazel, so it looks like he's going to be building to, I'm assuming, a sheep stick on the Lena. And surprisingly, this game just 10-10, but I don't think it's felt that passive. I don't think it's felt like there hasn't been much going on. It's It's been an active game. There's been a lot of movement on the map, but a kill every two minutes isn't the most exciting game typically in Dota, but it's been a, it's been a pretty good one thus far. As ha ha ha, maybe he's overextended here as he's going to get right click down. He's getting slowed by the Scotty from Relic. Keep in mind he does have the Aegis, but they're not going to chase him far enough. They just weren't able to get close enough. Maybe they could have used a Ravage there. I don't know. I don't know. I think they they weren't sure how far away the rest of the members of Black Sheep were. Oh, that would be if they knew, I think they would have probably thrown out one. Um, Radiance Middle Tower is under throwing out attack. one Ravage, of course, with the Refresher they have access to the second one. If uh, if all of a sudden there's an engage from Black Sheep, but I think I think if they used one, they may have been able to chew through that Aegis. In the end, they didn't. Radiance and Middle uh, Tower Haha was fallen. able to get back to his team in time. And Black Sheep keeps that Aegis, and also were able to take that Tier Two Tower. Well, they're going to push the bottom lane. This Chrysalid is going to have to take the long way around. This kind of sucks as a support when you end up in kind of no man's land there. And you're just like, oh yeah, I'm here with Magnus. It's fine. I'm not by myself. And all of a sudden he blinks onto the high ground. You're just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll head around the other way and I'll, I'll be with you guys in just a second. Don't do anything without me. Looks like we got the making of a potential team fight starting here. As we're gonna have those Cottle Blasts flying out. This is an Egg Scepter Cottle Blast, so we'll be healing his allies as it passes through them. Let's see if we can uh will actually tell me. There we go. And Illuminate heals allies for 75% of its damage values. We're still not having an engage here. Is it's it's really difficult for both teams to engage. And you know what? Most of the time, I don't think we would have had that difficulty if Ix Mike had picked up a Blink Dagger. Because I think when there was a moment where they were kind of at the high ground, a Tide Hunter would have blinked in and ravaged. But in the end, that wasn't really the right call, or that wouldn't have been the right call. And because he doesn't have the blink dagger, he almost like isn't able to make those mistakes. 
which is which is quite interesting. And because of that, black sheep, it's it's really hard for them to play into it. They're looking for a little bit of a mistake from wheel to act on. And when there aren't those mistakes, wheel just standing in a good good position and up on their high ground. There, there's really no way for black sheep to be able to engage, and unfortunately, black sheep aren't able to do anything with that Aegis as it's gone down now. So they were trying to force that fight. When they got down there, they had I think, right around two minutes or so with the Aegis, and they just got stalled out. They weren't able to to find a way to get a uh, engage going on this. Uh, well, on on the enemy team here, so that they could actually potentially win the fight and then take the tier 3 but look they only got 120 damage on the tier 3 that's all that was accomplished there incredible Sleazel now picking up a sheep stick getting a force staff onto the Nyx assassin as well hero starting to get a lot of items here is this one Looks like it's going a little late. We're 45 minutes into this game. Still just 20 kills apiece. Goody's going to pick up a bounty rune. Fortunes change. Black Sheep looks like they're maneuvering four heroes into the top lane to push it. It's actually five heroes. <laughs> There's Dank Mix there as well. Somehow I didn't see him. He's blending in with the, the green on the map from the, the neutral camp when it's pulled out of position, apparently. That's my excuse and I'm sticking with it. But Black Sheep won't push the high ground. Instead, they'll just back away. It's, it's tough because right now, Who's winning this game? We can take a look at the gold graph. We can see it's just over 2,500. Is that really an advantage? Not really. 45 minutes, 46 minutes into the game. That's nothing, essentially. XP. XP doesn't even matter right now, but it's only 2k. In fact, it's in favor of the opposite team that has the net worth lead. So Black Sheep has the XP lead. The only net worth that really matter, the only difference that really matters is this huge discrepancy between the troll and the Medusa. But when we look at the net worth and we can see how close it is overall and the fact that that trolls on the other side of this graph, we can see that everyone else on the Radiant side is kind of making up for it. So yes, the troll is net, as, as far as net worth is, is concerned, um, significantly ahead of the Dusa. Everyone else is effectively significantly ahead of their counterpart on the enemy team. Real goody is trying to run but it's not gonna happen he's gonna go down so we do see a kill and now what will black sheep look to do with it of course buyback is available and we are gonna have an rp in the mid lane as enzo's gonna jump on in but he's actually the one who's getting pressured down but that's gonna allow haha -ha to get on top of the Dusa and get those right clicks going and he was just bashing him constantly but now Oh my goodness, the Coddle, as he was TPing out, didn't get a single bash because of that mischance. I spoke about it in the draft, the value of that blinding light. 80% mischance. And it's it's just basically doing to troll what troll does to everyone else. And so, has picked up a refresher. He's going to use it right now to replenish or refresh that RP. And he's going to jump up onto the high ground. Not going to find anyone. IX Mike with the surprise blink. We'll jump on in with the first Ravage. There's the second as he just refreshed it. There comes the RP. And we're not going to lose anyone here at all. We're going to get a buyback from the Deuce. She's going to jump on into the fight. In fact, we will lose the troll. And now Chrysalid is going to get right clicked down. Dank Mech is latched by a really long shackle. But on the back of it, he will just pop into a Vendetta and try to run away. Derp Derp and Relic trying to find someone but they're not going to be able to catch up to anyone. They almost they almost caught up to the Zeus. In fact, they got one cast off but it was procced by the Lincoln Sphere. So, we only lost three heroes in all of that. Now they're going to go into the Roche Pit. Maybe now they'll find the cheese as it gets pinged out by IX Mike. 
So finally that cheese gets uh, acquired, but not by the team that took the Roche. His relic is now going to be sitting with a cheese. Derp Derp's going to get swapped into the enemy team, and that's no good for him. Sleazel's now going to get slowed down by the axes, as they're going to keep trying to chase him down. Relic managed to get a kill onto Dank Mech, as he was trying to come in from behind. Ix Mike now uses the Ghost Scepter, but Relic is the one in trouble, as they're going to go after him. Never mind, they're going to turn around and just go after the Tide Hunter instead. The watermelon, watermelon will fall. His gem's on the ground, the other gem's on the ground. Gem's everywhere, apparently. Gems and cheese is on the ground. Now Chrysalid will get stunned up, Relic will back away as the troll got tossed up in the air from the Yule Scepter from the Lina, and he doesn't have anyone there really to help him out as Goody's about to go down, I think? Will he? Oh, maybe not. Wow, he's going to be able to blink away. So we're going to keep an eye on Relic, who is going to go down as well, and they did in fact get Goody hit, was managed, managed to catch him with the Lightning Bolt. But it is going to be a total team wipe. But it was a very separated fight. Show fight recap. Well, it actually does recap most of the fight for us. So we will get a better idea of everything that went on. But it was a five-man wipe. And Black Sheep just losing two. Gold change. Eh, 3,400. 3,500 almost. Not really that significant. Like I said, 50 minutes into the game, gold isn't really the biggest thing in the world. As long as you got enough for buyback. Ix Mike, he doesn't. So there's going to be no buyback for him. He's still on cooldown, I think. No, he's not. He actually just doesn't have enough gold. Didn't he buy back recently? Maybe I'm crazy. No, it was the deuce that bought back. What am I talking about? Either way, Goody's going to buy back. And uh, well, we're going to get a buyback from Sleazel as well as they're desperately trying to defend their tier 3s. They need to make sure they don't overextend here and get picked off. If they do, they're surely going to lose their racks and they're going to get punished for it as Goody's going to get picked off. Enzo's going to jump forward with the RP onto Sleazel and Sleazel's going to go down and they may have just lost the game here. As this bottom set of racks is going to go down, they're probably going to be able to go tier 3 and racks in the mid lane as Drip Drip's going to go down as well. We may even see good game well, well played as they're actually not even going to go for the racks. They're just going to go for the tier 4s and the throne for the game win. The Dusa will be up in 20. But I don't think that's going to be enough time. Will Ix Mike be able to stall? He does have two Ravages available to him. So maybe he will. 10 seconds till the deuce is up. Tier 4s are down. Now they're going on the racks. Or sorry, now they're going on the throne. First Ravage will come out. But Ix Mike will get hit with the RP. He's going to refresh the second one. That's going to land. Dank Mech almost goes down to it. But Ix Mike will go down. Now Relic's going to step up. He's going to try to stop them from taking down this throne. As the Stone Gaze will freeze up the Troll Warlord, but now Relic getting stunned up. He's got no mana left, and he's going to take a fall. This is going to be it. The Throne's going to go down. We're not even going to see GG Well Played come out until after it goes down. But what a game. Oh my goodness. Black Sheep take it in the end. Whew. That was a game. You know, we, we didn't see too much going on in terms of, of hero kills for most of that game, but it, it finished strong. It finished real strong. And I, I want to echo, we may not have seen a lot of hero kills, but there was definitely a lot of things going on on that map. There was a lot of stuff going on. There was It wasn't just two teams just staying complete opposite of each other on the map and just farming, 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 farming. They were trying to make plays, but just good play all around was happening. And in Dota, you you largely make plays based on your opponent making mistakes and you're able to punish them for making mistakes and we didn't see that many of them. Certainly there was mistakes as, you know, Dota's a game of mistakes essentially, but, you know, we saw some pretty tight Dota getting played by both Wheel and Black Sheep. In the end, Black Sheep's able to take it. So Wheel, they finished 3-0 in their group last season and now they find themselves 1-1. In fact, Black Sheep is 1-0 in the group. And if we actually go back to how Black Sheep did last time in the Canada Cup, they finished 0 and 3. They're a very, very different roster than they were last season, but still, they're off to a 1 and 0 start. And they put on a hell of a show. And we're actually going to see them in our next game as well, going up against Boreal. That's going to start, well, probably right now. So I'm going to hop out of this game and make sure we, uh, we don't miss the start of the draft for that one. I'm not sure if maybe we'll get a break or not. I'm not sure how they're going to do that with the organizing. But uh, either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed that game. I certainly did. And uh, hopefully you're going to stick around for our next one. 
As uh, once again, I'm Niz. You're watching Nizcast. Make sure you hit that follow button, twitch.tv slash Nizcast. Follow me on Twitter and YouTube at Nizcast and youtube.com slash Nizcast, where I upload all the VODs from the from the games I cast. Besides that, hit uh, twitch.tv slash Dota to Canada Cup a follow as well. They're the official channel casting all this stuff and they're the tournament organizers. And also buy the in-game ticket because you get an awesome spend set and you support this awesome tournament. And 12.5% of that money goes back into the prize pool so you're also supporting the players. But like I said, we got another game so I'm gonna hop on into that, throw it to music in the meantime. And well, stick with us. <laughs> 